Invasive species impact all of California, every California. One of the most serious threats to conservation of native species, plants and animals. They're very harmful to crops, they're very harmful to backyards, to structures. Especially crop growers stand a tremendous amount Invasive to Invasive species are probably the biggest environmental problem that most Californians have never heard of. California, a place where millions of residents and visitors enjoy the beautiful ocean, mountains, deserts, lakes, and forests that we have to offer. And for those that don't live or visit, California still has plenty to share. California is the number one state in the nation as far as producing agricultural crops. California has over 300 different crops that are produced from San Diego, where you can have lychees, mangoes, papayas, up into Central California, where you have some of the best sweet corn in the nation grown. Northern California, where you have nursery crops, such as strawberry uh, nursery seedlings that, that are distributed for nurseries that homeowners and growers buy. So there's a very wide range of crops and diversity in California. California's specialty crops include fruits, vegetables, nuts, horticulture, nursery crops, and floriculture. These commodities are part of the agricultural fabric of our state that is seen in farms, markets, community gardens, and our supermarket shelves. It provides jobs in local communities, from the nurseries and vineyards of Southern and Northern California to the orchards of the Central Valley. In one way or another, agriculture affects everyone and everything in our state. It's no wonder so many people come here to live. Unfortunately, so do invasive species. Invasive species is a pretty specific term and it's misinterpreted frequently. There are two factors that define an invasive species. One, it's not from here. So somebody has brought it actively to California, either by accident or on purpose. And the second thing is that an invasive species is a non-native species that has an impact here, that has a cost to um, us through the environment or the economy. Invasive species can be plants, they can be insects, they can be mussels in the water, they can be vertebrates from frogs to feral pigs. There are all sorts of invasive species in California. There's the European earwig, the Asian and German cockroach, um, imported fire ants down south, Caribbean fruit fly, Mediterranean fruit fly. The European brown garden snail cost homeowners and growers, nurserymen, a lot of money to control the past. Invasive species uh, touch pretty much every Californian in a number of different ways, and in most ways they have no idea. It could be through recreational activities, it could be through increased food prices because of invasive plants or other organisms in their cropping systems. So there's a number of different ways in which uh, California should be interested ecologically. Of course, invasive species also threaten a lot of our endemic vegetation as well as our endemic wildlife, so they can impact us in many different ways. Sometimes the species that we see that are attractive are species that have come here originally through the horticultural trade because they are um, ornamental. However, once they've escaped, um, we become used to them and think they're a natural part of the California landscape. And these are things like pampas grass and ice plant, uh, broom, the bright yellow flowers on these bushes, many people recognize those, but they have a significant impact. The broom, for instance, is a, a ladder fuel which can cause intense forest fires. Um, the pampas grass, likewise, um, can have a big effect on, on coastal habitats. Species like Spartina, a smooth cord grass that grows around the edge of San Francisco Bay that's destroying mudflat habitat that is essential for hundreds of thousands of shorebirds that migrate along the Pacific Flyway every year. Even just one type of non-native species can have a large negative impact causing a chain reaction for many plants, animals, and people who live in or visit the area. Quagga and zebra mussels have the potential to fundamentally destroy every body of water in California. They sap 
the nutrient load of the water. By moving in at the bottom of the food chain and consuming all the microorganisms, fish population plummets, every population plummets except for millions and billions of these tiny mussels, which then clog water pipes. They ruin the recreational qualities of the, of the body of water by um, destroying outboard motors. Then they die in untold billions. They wash up on the beach. They stink to high heaven. They make the enjoyment of our waterways just about zero. There are many ways these invasives enter our state. Forest pests can come in wood packing or firewood. Cargo ships can haul many different types of plants and animals, both land and aquatic. Private citizens bring animals, plants, or infested fruits from out of state or country. And boats can haul aquatic plants and mussels from lake to lake, just to name a few. In this day and age, the amount of global trade and travel is endless. And unfortunately, that makes the pathways into California numerous. Well, the nursery industry is heavily impacted whenever an invasive species that plays on plants comes into the state of California. The nursery trade receives plants from all across the world. We source our plants from South Africa, from South America, from Australia, Asia, and even uh, Europe and, and uh, Eastern Asia. Any of those plants can come into the state of California bearing diseases or pests and we rely on the border inspection services to make sure that they or do not carry them. And we also in check them as they come into the nurseries themselves. So got different responsibilities. Along with the United States Department of Agriculture and the California Department of Food and Agriculture, California is fortunate to have the Invasive Species Council of California and the California Invasive Species Advisory Committee to help with this statewide problem. Many organizations and stakeholders participate and work together to gain a broad perspective on everyone's issues and come up with ways to be proactive in the fight against invasive species. It is important for farmers and environmentalists to work together because it's not just a farm problem. Invasive species impact all of us, whether it's the crops on a farm or whether it's the oak trees on a beautiful parkland. Invasive species that come in, they're voracious pests. They find the host that is most compatible and they eat away. The other thing that we have done in many, many counties have done it is form weed management areas. And it's a collaborative approach between agencies and and private landowners that um, form an official um, co-op and then they um, are really our eyes and ears and our educators out there to make sure that they and all of their constituent groups are aware of the threats from endangered or invasive species. When people learn about the problem, they learn how widespread it is and how multifaceted it is, they can become discouraged and think there's not much we can do. But that's not true. A few years ago, we started an outreach program with, with fifth graders, third, fourth graders, where we, we plant doctors went into the classroom and we, we spoke about these issues. And I think that's an incredibly uh, effective means of, of outreach. Education has to be ongoing and not just when the crisis hits. And so I'm hoping that's what we're doing here today, so that public can be better educated before the next crisis hits. Reaching out to the public is very important for maintaining uh, control on how invasive species move from one place to the other. We go to more places, we travel, we like to have a lot of different activities, and the risk of moving invasive species increases with that. So additional awareness is needed on all of us to ensure that we're not bringing things from one type of location to another location. And that goes from things in your garden, to recreational activities, to activities in the forest, moving firewood, and things like that. All of that is really part of our new culture and our enjoyment of our own environment. We're in California because we love this place, most of us, and we want to conserve its beauty. And part of that requires 
the responsibility of each citizen to, to do, their, do their part. Plant native species to increase biological diversity. Contribute in small ways and contribute in doing so to the, the greater good. Specialty crop growers are always going to face threats from invasive species. They've always got to be alert to the next one that's coming down the line. We have to create a harmonic balance in our ecosystem. Your participation is vital in controlling this. Invasive species will impact their, the lives of their children and their grandchildren even more so in the future if we don't do anything about it. They could be bringing in things that they're not even aware of, so education is key. Why do we work to stop the spread of invasive species in California? It's about preserving our natural heritage for us and for future generations. 